Hello, my name is Brad Carter. I'm an astronomer at the University of Southern Queensland. The reason I got into astronomy is I'm just fascinated by the universe and everything in it. Today, of course, we're going to look at the sun. The sun is important to study because it's the source of energy for pretty much all life on Earth. And of course, the sun, in studying it, we can learn more about the stars and our galaxy, the Milky Way, and even the universe beyond. The sun is a star and stars are suns. So 150 million kilometres away, we've got a fantastic example of a typical star. Our sun is a giant ball of gas, very bright of course, and the big mystery has been what makes the sun shine. So the origins of solar energy have been a mystery for many years when people understood that if you made the sun of coal, the only thing you could do is get energy for a very limited of time or if you used chemical reactions, the sun wouldn't produce a lot of energy for long enough. So people had to look for a new source of energy. And eventually they discovered that what makes the sun shine is of course nuclear energy. So the sun in fact shines because of the fusion of hydrogen atoms in its core. And that releases so much energy that we get more than enough energy for the sun to shine for millions and in fact billions of years. We now think we understand exactly how the sun shines through a process of nuclear fusion. So if we could do a cutaway of the sun, what we'd see is various layers. At the very core of the sun is an incredible nuclear furnace where hydrogen atoms are fused at great force together with each other to produce a new element called helium. So the conversion of hydrogen to helium at the core of the sun produces a huge amount of energy. The core is incredibly hot, something like 15 or 20 million degrees, and an enormous amount of energy is released. The energy released by the core makes its way to the surface through two other layers. The first is a radiative zone, where the energy comes through purely by radiation, and then the energy hits a, an area called the convective zone, or the convective layer, and that's where energy is transported by a motion similar to the boiling of water. So the energy that's created inside the core of the sun makes its way through the radiative and convective layer to reach the sun's surface, the one that we see. So that the sunlight that we might see on a nice sunny day has in fact began its journey as a process of nuclear fusion in the sun's core. The energy that's come to us from the sun in fact has taken thousands of years to reach the surface of the sun from the core and then a further eight minutes to reach us across the solar system. And the reason it's eight minutes is because the speed of light dictates how far fast light will right reach us from the sun. And if the sun is 150 million kilometers away, the speed of light means that we have to wait eight minutes for sunlight to reach us. So if the sun suddenly disappeared, in fact, we wouldn't know about it for a further eight minutes. Above the visible layer of the sun, there is in fact an atmosphere. It is very tenuous compared to the rest of the sun but is nevertheless visible at a time of total solar eclipse. So when the moon completely obscures the visible surface of the sun, we see a faint white ghostly outer layer called the solar corona. And we even see bits and pieces of little pink uh, gas, which is called the solar chromosphere. So the sun, in fact, has a very complicated atmosphere that is not very readily seen unless we have a nice total solar eclipse. Perhaps one of the most interesting things about our sun is in fact it's a variable star. There is something called solar activity, most famously of course in the dark sunspots that appear on the visible surface of the sun, but also explosions called solar flares and other forms of motions and the release of energy in the solar atmosphere. So solar activity in fact makes the sun change in its appearance, particularly through the changing uh, numbers of sunspots we see from time to time. Okay, we can ask ourselves, of course, what causes all this solar activity, particularly sunspots? And in fact, the answer is simple. The sun produces a magnetic field. Inside the sun, the motion of electrical charges produces magnetism. And the magnetic fields generated inside the sun emerges as the, as the, at the surface. And the magnetic fields, in fact, do many things to the solar atmosphere. For example, the presence of magnetic fields inhibit the flow of energy to the surface of the sun in areas, and that causes local parts of the sun's surface to remain relatively cool and dark compared to the rest, and that's what sunspots are. So when we see a dark sunspot on the sun, 
we know that there's magnetic field emerging from the surface that tends to make that part of the solar surface a little bit cooler and darker in comparison to the rest of the sun. If we watch the sun over time, we in fact notice that solar activity waxes and wanes, and we call this the solar cycle. So the sun's cycle of sunspots and other forms of activity, in fact, has a period of about 11 years. And so over time, we can watch the number of sunspots rise and fall, and in synchronization with that, we also see more flares when the sun has more sunspots. So solar activity is definitely cyclic in nature. And in fact, the origins of this solar cycle is again caused by magnetism. So inside the sun, we have a dynamo producing magnetic fields, and it turns out that that dynamo itself changes over time. So we know now that the sun has both a cycle in activity, but also a corresponding cycle in magnetism. From our point of view here on Earth, we notice that the sun produces lots of wind in the form of charged particles flying out into the solar system, and also lots of intense radiation when there is things like a giant solar flare occurring in the solar atmosphere. So this flood of radiation and particles that comes from the sun produces a special space environment around the Earth. And we call this environment space weather because as solar activity changes, the space weather that, that the sun is embedded in changes over time. And the reason space weather is important is in fact the radiation and particles that comes from the sun can affect life on Earth, can affect satellites, and of course produce the beautiful aurora that we see at the South and North Poles. So space weather is another aspect of the sun that we can bear in mind when we're trying to understand the Earth's environment. It's increasingly clear that in fact solar activity matters for us here on Earth. And that is because the activity produced by the sun can have quite important consequences for our technology. So in 1859, there was a particularly powerful solar flare called the Carrington event, and it shut down the telegraph for a while. In the 20th century, we've seen a number of really major solar flare events that have done things like shut down power grids in certain areas. So we realize now as we're a modern technological civilization with satellites and large scale power grids, that in fact, this technology is sensitive to the space weather produced by solar activity. So I think it's important for us to continue to understand our sun, to understand space weather, and to realize that our technology is in fact sensitive to what the sun is doing. To summarize, we've learned today that the sun is in fact a star, and that stars are suns. We've learned that the sun shines through a process of nuclear fusion, where hydrogen atoms are thrown together to form a new element, helium, and energy is released that we eventually see as sunlight. And of course, we've also realized that the sun has activity that is essentially magnetic in nature, and that variations in solar activity are important for us because of the space weather environment that it produces around the Earth. We hope you've enjoyed the presentation today. And if you wanted to learn more about the sun, you can do some really interesting activities if you go to the website called zooniverse.org, and there are some activities there that you can do on the sun. Thank you and goodbye.